Above the temple of Apollo at Delphi were carved the words, Nothi Soizen, Know Thyself. In ancient times, the oracle was visited by many great leaders, including Socrates and Alexander the Great. An important key to leadership is this ancient practice of self-knowledge and self-awareness. Now, there are a number of ways through which you can come to know yourself better. Mindfulness is one, a leadership coach is another, and so too is reflexive writing. So what is reflexive writing? Reflexive writing is about organising and cementing how you need to grow before moving on to embody your virtues. Writing structures and clarifies thought. Reflexive writing should be a structured process based on self-data. Data could include daily journal entries, assignment feedback, experience in group work, work experience, events that happened while you were growing up, uh, performance in online simulations, self-assessment quizzes, etc. There are many sources of reflexive data. Collaborative reflexive writing with a trusted colleague is also a useful practice. You can ask yourself four kinds of reflexive questions. How did you feel? Feelings and emotions really matter in this process. What have you learned? Be honest about this and think hard. How were you affected? Indicate how the learning event, issue or situation affects your future behaviour. What intersubjective, that is social relational issues, should you consider? Everything happens in a social context and your future will be in a social context too. It's a waste of time not to carefully consider this or worse, it becomes a narcissistic exercise. Let's consider each of these four areas in more detail. How did you feel? Did your body respond? Did you even listen to your body? Have you gained a new understanding of your responses to the learning event, issue or situation? What were your cognitive and emotional reactions and why did this happen? Identify specific emotions. This is very important to be able to really understand the triggers for change. Analyse the learning event, issue or situation in relation to prior knowledge, feelings or attitudes. What were the consequences of that feeling? What is the value of the learning event, issue or situation that has occurred and does that change your feelings about it? For example, did you learn that the feelings, high heart rate, butterflies, worry, etc., are worse than the actual experience of doing public speaking and therefore that it is a mistake to associate public speaking with those bad anticipatory feelings because doing it is not so bad? Is there anything you can do to change your bodily responses and feelings to more constructive ones? What does research say? about your responses. How are you affected? This includes clarification of an issue, the development of a skill or the resolution of a problem. How will you approach the same or similar event, issue or situation in the future? What have you learnt about yourself through this process? Indicate how the learning event, issue or situation affects future behaviour. What intersubjective social relational issues should you consider? You need to consider how your subjective experience and the subjective experiences of others are either in conflict or in unison. How and why did others think differently to you? How and why did others feel differently to you? What are the critical intersubjective events, conflicts, alignments, that might be important in explaining key aspects of your experience. What bodily responses do you need to work on? For example, non-verbal communication or body language, such as gesture, tone of voice, should you have smiled, were your arm movements too jerky, etc. The writing process should involve making concrete plans about what, when and how you're going to create the changes you need. 
Set yourself a timeline so that you can actually do the specific development tasks that you need to do. Following the basic rules I've talked about will take you a long way towards embodying excellent leadership. I wish you the best of luck.